confidence and experience that's going to influence our choices. And I'll start with confidence. You know, what is it? It's an emotion. And that helps you understand that it's going to rise and fall depending on how close you are to that moment of truth or that test you're about to take. And developing your confidence is really a strategy. There's certainly some tactics. You've probably heard Amy Cuddy's power poses. And, but what I like to think about are what are the strategies of developing your confidence? The first most important one is throughout your career, experiencing your success, not achieving success, experiencing your success, recognizing that your actions contributed to everything that you have done to this point. It was maybe sure, right person, right time, right place, but you played a role. And that helps you prevent that imposter syndrome, that feeling like you're not worthy or like you're fraud in your situation. Another way to develop your confidence is by really focusing on your self-talk. What are you saying to yourself during moments of challenge? Are you going to say, I'm going to blow it? I suck. I shouldn't even be here. Or are you going to say, you know what? I've got just as good a shot as everybody else. Why not me? If not me, then who gets to do this? And that has shown through just research to play a powerful impact and influence on the outcome that you're going to be in. So imagine you go into an interview and you're like, oh, I'm just really lucky to be here. I hope they don't see all the flaws and holes in my resume versus, you know, I've got this. I deserve this just as much. as It's going to have a different outcome. The third is who are you surrounded by? Our community plays a powerful influence on our level of self-efficacy, you know, how well we're going to do in the moment of tested. And finally, what are your man? what are your, um, ways that you manage your fears, your worries, and concerns. Because if you let those run rampant with it out going unchecked, you're never going to do anything significant in your life. Like I have a friend who's an executive director of an association, and she wanted to transition to be an independent consultant. And she thought if she left, she had a better chance of being a crack whore on the streets of Chicago than doubling her salary in three months' time. I mean, our fears are crazy. Because I remember telling her, like, don't you think your friends would stop you <laughs> at some point before <laughs> you're homeless or doing crack like come on <laughs> and so so you've got to but the, so again that's the strategies for confidence but then we have experience and this is where it we talk about this in bed on you too what comes first confidence or experience does confidence get you into the arena for the experience or does previous experience give you the confidence and so this is like a chicken and an egg and i really don't have an answer i just think like don't overvalue experience that it undermines your confidence. You can always build your confidence. And when you don't have experience, you can pull from other people's experiences to inform your judgment and your wisdom. I completely agree. And for us, we talk about the three factors in, in confidence really being your attitude, knowledge. So understanding what you're walking into, some of that preparation, which we'll talk about, and then experience where experience is a little tricky is we often think it has to be completely relevant to the task at hand, right? So I need a lot of experience in a job interview. And it's like, no, you actually just need experience having great conversations with people. Because if you have a great conversation on that interview, you'll end up getting the job. So we often try to make that experience too related to the task at hand. And we don't think about all the other experience that we have of winning, succeeding, putting ourselves in the arena to draw that confidence from.